In the last video, I mentioned our tendency to create umbrella terms like dream, life, and about the physicist's assumption that there's some grand unified theory. It also happens within economic terms and political terms, whether it's past tendencies towards empire building, whether it's globalization or the global village, we want to embrace, we want to embrace everything in to one. It's possible, I'm not saying for sure, but, it, but this is possibly a displacement activity because we've lost sight of the fact of the intrinsic oneness of everything anyway. This oneness which is Brahman. In the case of a being with several limbs, it is one being with several limbs. Even so, Brahman is one being with countless limbs known as Jiva, etc. It's the one consciousness, this consciousness which you experience as embodied in me, is exactly the same consciousness that's embodied in you. It might seem absurd, but you wouldn't argue that the space in your region is different from the space in my region. It's all space. We can come up with physical arguments you know, in terms of modern physics. Maybe the curvature of your space is slightly different from the curvature of my space. But you get the idea, you get the idea. If the analogy for space doesn't work, we can just drop it. The fact is that we cannot say there's any essential difference between the two. In fact, there's not even two. It's one consciousness manifesting, just as I've got two feet. What's the connection between the feet? Not just a physical connection, but they belong to me. These two feet belong to me. They come within my sphere of control. And this is the way with Brahman and all beings. The object is but an appearance. Consciousness is infinite peace, which exists forever unmodified. So the object being all objects, all beings. So you have as much reality as somebody in my dream. And of course, you can say the same. It is useless to investigate these as if they are different. In the infinite, there are infinite notions. The latter are called ignorance. There is no other ignorance here. What's really the ignorance isn't actually the notions, it's the identification with them. It's the belief in these notions. It's the adherence to these notions. The jiva alternately passes from the waking to the dreaming and from the dreaming to the waking states. But he is constant whether he is awake or asleep. Even though you undergo changes, the sense of yourself is the same. It's still you, an individual, undergoing these experiences. In the dream, you might be undergoing all sorts of transformations. You might find yourself somebody of the opposite sex or in an animal body, but it's still you. Somehow it's still you, isn't it? What makes it you? And the same way when we're awake. Our body's completely different to how it was when we were a kid, but somehow it's still me. If I lose my limbs, it's still me. The two states of deep sleep and turiya, the fourth state, are the reality underlying both the waking and the dream states. We come and go in and out of the deep sleep state. If you're a spiritual practitioner, you come and go in and out of the Turiya state. Awareness surfaces and then it slips away again. This happens if you're not a spiritual practitioner, you're awake, then you slip into deep sleep. And at some point you come out of deep sleep and you're awake again. So in this way, the two states of deep sleep and turiya 
are the reality underlying both the waking and the dream states. The two latter are identical, and in fact it is the Turiya that knows all the others. So we've gone beyond the discrimination between the waking and the dream state. They're both created by the mind, or by consciousness. The Turiya is the absolute state. It's, it's actually Brahman. It's the soul consciousness. And there are ripples in the surface of that consciousness. And these ripples are what we call the waking state and the dream state. Perhaps the waking state is like the top of the ripple and the dream state is the trough of the ripple. But there's, there's, no, there's no essential difference. They're just the ripple of consciousness. To the enlightened, the waking, the dreaming and the deep sleep states are only the Turiya. For in the Turiya there is no ignorance. The Turiya is when consciousness realizes its own nature and this, is, and this can happen any time. But there are periods of self-forgetfulness. And this is when we talk about deep sleep, waking and dreaming. Therefore, though there appears to be a diversity in it, it is non-dual. It is university. It is only the childish and ignorant people who talk of duality and non-duality. The enlightened ones laugh at all this. However, without such discussion based on duality and non-duality, it is not possible to clean one's consciousness of ignorance. It is only in that spirit that I have dealt with all this as your dear friend. We don't want to get too caught up in all this talk of duality and non-duality. We get the idea we've got to somehow escape duality into non-duality. It's just a way of talking.